Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Igniter for RESTful API development using SILD authentication. Inside this video, we'll discuss about query builder methods. If I back to editor, inside the last video, we have seen the concept of migration, that is, what is migration, why we create inside application, and what is the use of that. Now this time, we'll understand the concept of query builder methods. So in short, query builder methods are those methods by the help of that we can perform database operations like insert data, select data, update data, as well as delete data. So inside this video, we'll see all these concepts using query builder methods. So before starting the development process of query builder methods, let's go back to a slide, open a new tab. So before using query builder methods, we always need to create a table object. So the first step, step number one, that is we need to actually create an instance of database. So by using help a function called dbconnect, actually we can create a database object. In step number two, we need to create a table object. So to create table object, we'll use this table, not actually table, this db, it means this is an object which has been created inside step number one and we will call table method. Inside this table method, we need to pass the table name. For example, if we want to perform database operations for this students table, so we need to pass the table name here called students. So this line of code, it means step number two is going to return a table object. By the help of that object, we can call our current methods like insert method, update method, select method, as well as delete method. Let's back to editor to see all these concepts in action. So I will go inside app folder, controllers, and let's say that I will open sites.php. So here, to create table objects as well as database object, what I will do, I will go here and define our construct method. So public function double underscore construct and right here inside this method what I will do and before this method let's say private db one more variable that is private and let's say table. Now inside this construct method what I will do let's say this db equals to db connect which is a helper function which returns all about our database object. Now in the second line let's create a table object so this table equals to this db, it means database object and we'll call table method. Inside this, we'll pass the table name. Once we create the object of database and table, then we can perform all about the db operations inside this table. So let's say that we want to first perform all about our insert command. If I back to browser, go inside this table. So as we can see that currently inside this table we don't have any data but by using insert command we'll insert some row inside this students table. Back to editor. So first rename this method so instead of index let's say insert student go inside this method and let's say data equals to we need to create an array and if we want to insert any new student inside this table we want values for this name field, email field and phone number. Because this id is auto incremented column, it means whenever we insert any new row inside this table, automatically a unique id will be generated. So we don't need the value for this id column and also as we can see email and phone number is also optional. So here only we need to pass the name of the student. But let's say that I will pass this name, email and phone value. Go here, let's say name, email, phone. So here, let's say that this is the student name. This is the email address value which is a dummy value. For the phone number, I am passing some dummy characters and now 
I will use this table object to interact with our students table. So this table will call insert method. Look at IntelliSense, we need to pass a set and this is a data set. So what I will do, I will pass this data variable here. So let's say data and it will return the true or false value. So I will wrap inside if block, it means if this line of code is going to return the true value, then if block will get executed. So here, let's echo within S3 tag. Let's say student created. Otherwise, inside this else block, I will copy this line code, put it here. And let's say that failed to create a student. Save this change. Now to call this method, we need to create a route inside our routes.php file. So I will go inside this config folder. Let's search for routes.php. Open that. Go here. Let's say routes. We'll use get method and here let's add hyphen student. It will call sites controller and from sites controller it will call insert student method. So scope solution operator and this is the method name. Save the changes. Let's go to terminal. Start development server. So php spark serve. Press enter. It will start the inbuilt development server. We can see here. So let's click open link. It will automatically redirect to the browser. And to insert our student, we need to call the route called at hyphen student. So I will copy this route name, go here, put a forward slash and add hyphen student, press enter. We can see student created. Let's go back to database, click on browse. Now as we can see that we are getting a single value row inside student's table. So it means successfully we have executed our insert statement. Next, I will see all about update statement. So for update st statement, let's create one more method that is public function update student. Inside here, again we need to use this table object. By the help of that, we can call update method. So while updating any student inside table, we want two values. The first about student ID and the second updated values. So on the behalf of student ID, we'll put updated data inside existing row. So here, let's say student ID equals to, let's say that I want to update this first number row or to be very clear, let's insert one more data here. We are creating one more data. Save this change, go here, let's reload student and here we have some error that is unexpected token, go here and actually this line is not complete so make comment of that, go here, reload this page, student created, go and reload. So successfully as we can see that now we have the second row inside the student's table. Let's get back to editor. So here inside this update student, let's say that I want to update this second number ID. So student ID equals to 2 and we want updated data. So it will be updated data equals to and here let's say that we want the email values should be different. So in this case what I will do email equals to at the rate example.net so this will be the updated email value and here let's call this table and I will call update method look at IntelliSense it is asking for set of data first and then we need to pass via condition so here what I will do I will pass updated data and in the second value, I need to pass an array and inside this array, I need to tell this query that id equals to student id and what I will do, 
it will return either true or false value so I will wrap it inside if block else block so in case of success it will go inside this if block so let's copy this message go here let's say student updated I will copy put it here and let's say failed to update student if I save this change go here inside routes.php I will copy this route let's create one more route this is for update student and this time this route will call update student method from sites controller so I will copy this route go here put it here in place of add hyphen student so whenever we hit this URL this will call update student method and this method will update the existing data this email value along with this id let's save all these changes go and hit and as you can see student updated go here let's reload this page and as you can see the email value of this second number student id now updated so this was our second statement what we executed using this table object. Now let's see all about our delete statement. So I will create one more method that is public function. It's a delete student. Now in this method to delete any specific student from table we need only the student id value. It means we want only the condition. So here let's say that student id equals to 2 we want to delete from table so by using our table object let's say this table we will call delete method look at intellisense we need to pass where condition here so inside this delete i will pass student id it will return true or false so i will wrap it inside if block else block so copy this line put it here let's say student deleted I will copy put it here let's say failed to delete student and fail to update student so if you save this change go here let's create delete route so it will be delete hyphen student copy the method name I will go here and let's pass it here save these changes I will copy this route back to browser and instead of calling update hyphen student i will call delete hyphen student so once we press enter it will go go and call this delete student method and this method on the basis of this student id it will go and delete that let's in action go and press enter student deleted go inside table so hopefully we will see that second number id does not exist and it exists it means we will have some error go here and i think that instead of passing student id here we need to create an array and inside this array we need to pass id we need to tell this query that we need to use id column of table save this change go and reload student id deleted go and reload this link and as we can see that second number id now deleted so finally we had completed all the concept of insert a statement update a statement as well as delete a statement and the final one then we need to see all about select a statement so here let's define our final method that is public function select students here inside this method again we'll use table object so this table and by using table this is the table object right here inside our constructor so this table and we'll use get method and after get we need to use get result and here let's store all the students inside this variable ego pi tag to format our output let's say print r and students if i save these changes go here i will create one more route so this will be let's say students only and this time it will call select students so i will copy 
and put it here. Copy this route back to browser. Instead of calling delete-student, I will call students. Press enter. Now we can see that we are getting an array and inside this array we have a single object and this is because inside our table only we have a single row. If I copy and let's say that here, this will be our second student. If I click on go button, so we can see now we have two rows. If I go and reload, now we can see we have two object. So by using this method called get result, we are getting all the data but it is, but it is an object format. So if we want to actually get all the data in array format, it means array of arrays. What I will do instead of using get result, I will call get result array. Save these changes, go and reload. Now we can see that inside this parent array, we are getting one array and second array. So this is all about selecting all the data from a student's table. Now let's say that we want only a single row that is of this third number ID. We want only this single number row. So we need to implement or use where method. So this table, I will use one more method that is where. Create an array and inside this array, let's say ID equals to 3. Back to browser. And if I go and reload that, now we can see that we have a single row on the basis of this ID. But it is not making any sense that if we have a single row, so why we are getting in array format. So instead of using get result array, what I will do, instead of calling result, I will say get row array. If you save this change, go and reload, now we can see that we are getting a single array value. So in case if we are returning a set of data, so in that case we need to use get result or get result array. But in case if we are getting only a single value, single scalar value, so in that case we should use get row or get row array. So successfully, by the help of this video, now we have the complete idea about query builder methods. We have created our table object and by the help of this object we had called insert method, update method, delete method as well as select methods. So in the next video, we will see some more different concepts. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.